not to mention the billions more needed to repay creditors. Now, as everyone counting the cost, though, we think the best way to make sense of those numbers is to talk to actual business people. And when you think Italian business, clothing, fashion often come to mind. Companies like Benetton, founded in Treviso, currently listed in the fashion capital of Milan, 6,000 stores, 120 countries. And from humble beginnings, too, the story goes that back in 1965, 30-year-old Luciano Benetton saw a market for the brand's now famous colourful clothing and sold his younger brother's bicycle to buy a second-hand knitting machine to get the business going. Clearly, it was all a success. Luciano's company, the Benetton Group, now turns over around 2 billion euro a year. And guess what? We've got his son on the show, Alessandro Benetton, now Executive Deputy Chairman of the Benetton Group, joining us from Counting the Cost London Studios. Alessandro, welcome. Uh, as I said just now, I'm interested to get your views as a businessman in Italy, who does business there and all over the world. What is business confidence like? Forget the economic numbers, put them to the side. What's it actually like doing business there? Okay, uh, a good element about the Italian economy is that we've got about 90% of the GNP of a country, which is based on mid small, medium-sized firms, mostly family-owned. And uh, the spirit of those companies is continuously uh, very active uh, and very, I'm not going to say bullish, because clearly there is uh, an outlook uh, in the market which is fairly gloomy for these companies as well. But the enthusiasm that every single uh, small, medium-sized firm has in its uh, heritage and its attitude is still out there. But how much does enthusiasm count for when, that, when, uh, dema sorry, when demand is slowing, when your neighbours in Europe are, are slowing down as well? Does being confident, and, uh, does it really make a difference in the business world? I think that uh, uh, this, this is a very good point. I, I think uh, the, uh, in, in this respect, uh, there's a lot of preoccupation for what is going to happen uh, at European level. I think uh, all the entrepreneurs uh, are big fan of a European project. Uh, I think the financial markets today are telling us, uh, okay, uh, telling to the leaders of Europe, uh, what is uh, your project? Are you going to do a real Europe or you're not? And if you're not, uh, all of you are going to be in trouble. In this context, uh, these small, medium-sized companies are very much worried because we have a weak demand. Uh, we have uh, an outlook, uh, we have uh, the cost of credit, uh, uh, which is just too high. Uh, so there is a lot of, uh, in this respect, uh, although entrepreneurs need to be optimistic by definition, there is a little bit of pessimism uh, because of the uh, gloomy outlook. And what is it that's been hitting you the most? I saw your third quarter numbers, they were down. What has been the biggest impact on you? Well, I was talking about small, medium-sized firms, uh, which have mostly uh, Italian or European market. Fortunately, in the case of Benetton, uh, we have uh, an international, we are present in 120 countries. Uh, so for uh, some uh, core internal markets that are not doing so well, uh, we're quite well balanced uh, with emerging growth markets. I think about India, where by the year end uh, we'll be opening the 70 new stores uh, on a yearly basis uh, for a total of 450 uh, stores. Uh, we employ 250 people. Uh, we export product out of uh, India. I'm quite happy about what uh, we're doing in Russia as well, uh, with the old Republic of Russia. We're doing quite fine in terms of increase in sales. I think we have a double digit uh, increase in sales. So uh, there are some markets, emerging growth markets, that are balancing uh, out uh, uh, what, what is happening in Europe. And, and did I hear you correctly, I heard you talking to a member of our studio crew there in London before the show, uh, that you're open in Kabul and in Afghanistan as well? Yes indeed, yes indeed. I think we opened a few years uh, ago uh, and, uh, and this has been in the tradition of the company. As I said, we are present in 120 countries in the world and uh, we always made uh, this as a I'm sorry, philosophical statement uh, and not just a, a business uh, uh, element uh, uh, because we think it's important. Uh, Okay, let's talk more about the business specifically. Um, in a market like clothing and apparel, a huge market, how do you distinguish yourself? You know, who, who are your main competitors? How do you keep yourself up there with your competition? This is a very good question and not an easy question to answer to when you are in 120 countries in the world because every single country has a different uh, environment from a competitive point of view. We like to think uh, that uh, our price point, uh, the relationship between the quality, what we think is a high quality of a product at a very accessible price, uh, is the so-called Benetton positioning. And uh, we want to stick to that. So in doing uh, this type of choice, uh, uh, of course, uh, we are 
all the time very much alert uh, about what competitors are doing. Competitors are doing. We are very much stimulated uh, by what competitors are doing. Uh, but I don't think it would be a good idea to run after a different business formula or different situations just because some competitors are doing that. All right, I have to ask about the advertising campaigns. I'm sure you get asked about this in every interview you do, but this most recent controversial campaign, we've got some pictures here called Unhate, with various world leaders kissing. Did you ex expect, no, you must have expected actually the type of reaction you get because this has become a Benetton trademark. Well, um, I, I think uh, to a certain extent uh, uh, there is a continuation to a past philosophy. And the philosophy has always been uh, of uh, the one of uh, sharing with the consumer uh, and individuals in general, not just the consumer, uh, a point of view, a philosophy, a statement, uh, a, a level of attention on the topics uh, that uh, we thought were contemporary topics. And many contemporary topics many times uh, are controversial by definition. Uh, I don't like when people uh, tell me that uh, it, there is some uh, uh, doing it on purpose for shocking people. That, that, that is definitely was not in, in the agenda. And if you think about North Africa, if you think about uh, Wall Street, if you think about uh, Rome, Athens, so many uh, uh, negative uh, and, and, and hating uh, uh, action uh, and situation have occurred. So it was some sort of uh, uh, scream of hope uh, uh, of saying, uh, hey, let's look in a different, uh, in a different direction. Uh, and, and of course there was definitely no way of wanting to hurt uh, anybody's feelings uh, uh, in, in, in doing this. Uh, but do you I think, think people that, uh, got that in reality... Sorry to interrupt, Alessandro. Do you think people actually got that? Because you've, you've said you don't like when people talk about the shock value. The fact is, it does have that effect. Even if you say you're not going for it, it does. Do you think people see past that enough and understand what you were trying to do? I, I think uh, that uh, the data that we have collected uh, uh, in the web uh, are telling us that uh, more than 80% of the sentiment on the web, and we had many contacts as you can imagine on, on the campaign uh, with uh, especially the younger generation and the emerging markets, uh, like well over 80% uh, had uh, a positive sentiment regarding the campaign. In other words, they got the message. And let's not forget that this campaign is about creating a foundation who's going to do actual things. So it's not just a fact but his acts as well. And uh, I think the younger generation is very sensitive to this. Like the younger generation is very sensitive uh, to the financial situation. Just a final thought from you, uh, Alessandro. Going back to this idea of entrepreneurship, we have spoken to a lot of people on this show, the likes of Sir Richard Branson and, and Tony Fernandez, who all seem to say that these downturn times are the best times, when you shouldn't sit back and wait for things to get better. You should make them better. What do you think? Oh, I think uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's absolutely a, a point of view that I do share. Uh, is uh, in fact, uh, uh, and even when we talk, just not uh, just as an entrepreneurs, uh, which you know it's in our nature uh, to risk and make uh, discontinuity choices during a discontinuity time. But I think it's also this time of moment uh, can be you know uh, very very important uh, for countries as well because clearly there is something in the system that is not functioning. Just if I think about the younger generation in the south of Europe, well, out of, tw of people between 25 and 35 years old, we've got one third of these people that are not even working and they're not studying. And these people are basically telling us, uh, hey, listen, I have nothing to do with uh, derivatives uh, and toxic uh, instruments, and why should I pay the price for it? So I think uh, we have an opportunity to redesign the future for future generations. Alessandro Benetton from the Benetton Group. What a pleasure it's been talking to you. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.